please uh, if you have any questions uh, anything at all on the problems or or on the lecture anything so you can please feel free to unmute and ask whatever you want to say and i would also share the last lecture so i am sharing something which also has the last link so in any way so i would start with uh, so one of the problems and uh, if you have any question in between you can just unmute and ask immediately uh, so uh, so actually most of the problem which i gave are very huh? simple sorry so uh, most of the problems that i uh, suggested are very simple and uh, so uh, one to one of the thing is important uh, meaning slightly non trivial uh, which is uh, an algorithm to find inverse modulo m so just uh, uh, how do you so given given an uh, given two integers r and m which are uh, relatively co prime uh, meaning their gcd is 1 then how do you find the inverse of r modulo m so that was one of the problem so so in fact this euclid uh, division algorithm can be used to uh, give an algorithm so we'll discuss that and uh, find some inverses of course very small for very small numbers you can check by hand you can simply uh, multiply with each element uh so uh, if you are specially yeah so if you if you can just multiply by each of those elements in uh, z mod m and uh, see which one you can get but that that's not a nice way to do if your m is large so uh, uh, so how does one talk about this algorithm so i would just start by recalling uh, euclid's algorithm division algorithm uh, so euclidean division algorithm so that is to find the gcd of two integers a and b so a and b are positive integers so algorithm to find the gcd so uh, what we do we uh, we divide a by b and uh, of course a and b can be interchanged so uh, just start with one so b q1 plus r1 so one uh, the suffix one uh, is to denote the step number so this is the first step uh, so where so everything is integer i'm not not, not mentioning it again uh, and uh, this r1 is between 0 so it can be 0 if uh, b actually divides a then it is 0 and uh, it, and it is at most Uh, at most b and uh, so that's the first step and we should keep track of the gcd so just note that gcd of ab is the same as gcd of br1 uh, this is comma and that is one yeah so gcd of ab should be equal to gcd of br1 and uh, then then keep doing this so let me write a few steps so then b so divide b by r1 so that would be r1 
q2 plus r2 again r2 is between 0 and uh, r1 so that's to uh, signify second step and uh, we want to keep track of the gcd so this is uh, br1 is equal to r1 r2 our next step is to uh, uh, look at this r1 and divide it by r2 so this is r2 q3 plus uh, r3 so 0 less than equal to r3 less than r r2 and r1 r2 is uh, the gcd of r1 and r2 is gcd of r2 and r3 So we keep doing this and uh, let me just write the end uh, some some k step so yeah we would write k minus k step yeah any, anything no? no sir no no yeah okay so anyway i mean anyone if you just feel free to unmute and ask so no, no issue so, uh, uh, also, yes, uh, I want to make a comment yeah. that uh, uh, I am watching the chat, so they can you can also alternatively, um, yes, you sure, can sure. print on yeah. the, Just post on the chat post. and I'll keep track of the chat for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, that's what I am going to do when Raghavan is doing that, that tutorial, so that uh, that is valid in all tutorials. So you can just put a post a chat. So K minus three. Uh, so just uh, coming to this K minus one. So, so this is third step. Just notice the, uh, the indexing. So this is third step. So here it is three and this is um, uh, one. So if, if I'm looking at K minus one at step, then this should be k minus so two less than that. So this is k minus three and r k minus two. Q uh, has the same thing. So k minus one and r k minus one. So, okay, this is a bit larger. So I'll just write it here. So zero less than equal to r k minus one less than r k minus minus two and uh, gct of r uh, let me keep track of that yeah so gct of r uh, uh, what it should be so third step so i want this to be uh, these two yeah so k minus three r k minus two uh, brackets are there. So this is equal to RK minus 2 and uh, RK minus 1. Yeah. So GCD of these two is equal to the GCD of these. So this, the same, same thing. And as uh, and the, the next step, so the kth step. So this just increase everything by one. So R K minus one Q K plus R K. And we suppose that R K is zero. So that at K stage, we get a zero remainder. So uh, suppose R K is zero. So if RK is zero, that simply means RK minus one divides RK minus two. So this is the symbol we are using to denote that uh, uh, this one divides the other one. 
So R K minus one divides R K minus two, and uh, therefore the GCD of R K minus one and R K minus two is R K minus one itself. and now we go back in that in this gcd tower yeah okay so i did not write the last step i i, sh I should also write that so just uh, just i forgot that so r k minus 1 r k minus 2 uh, should be r k minus 2 r k minus 1 just keeping the track of this so k minus 1 So this part is for this step. So for the k minus one step. So just let me write it for k step as well. So this is uh, r k minus one r q. So that's the k step. And uh, so ah uh, uh, sorry, we did not actually need this because uh, uh, so r k is zero. So we we don't need to write this. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I, I we don't need to write this because this is just zero. So it the GCT process stops in that step. Yeah, sorry. So then uh, R K minus one uh, divides R K minus two because R K we have assumed to be zero, and uh, this GCT R K minus one and of uh, GCT of R K minus one and R K minus two is simply R K minus one. So uh, and that is what is here. so we have this gcd so we have that this gcd is equal to r k minus 1 r k minus 1 and then we can simply go back we can simply go back so this gcd we just simply go back with uh, all these equalities to reach ab so all of them are equal they are just connected like this so this the second one is the first one so always the the second one of the previous gcd is the first one in the next step so this these are all equal and uh, then uh, rk plus k minus 1 gives you the gcd of uh, ab so uh, that implies rk minus 1 is the gcd we are looking for so this is the gcd of a and b so the uh, so what we are uh, doing we just using the division algorithm uh, uh, repeatedly so we are just iterating the division algorithm and as soon as we get a uh, remainder zero we get actual divisibility the last remainder whatever the last remainder so we we get a divis we get remainder zero here at the kth stage so then just the last remainder which is in k minus 1th step is the gcd of a and b and that's that's the that's the that's how we find gcd and now what we want to do is to uh, uh, have a algorithm to do this so let me just write that so so suppose uh, so that write it as some Uh, D is the GCD of A and B. Then there exists integers m and n, not necessarily positive. So there exists integers m and n such that. m a and n b this linear combination of this a and b uh, is uh, the gcd so you can write gcd as an integer linear combination of a and b so this is what we want to do now so uh, what we want to do uh, that given a and b uh, so we want to uh, just write out an algorithm like this in fact it is just going to give this and the same algorithm just interpreted in this way uh, we want to find a and n so given ab we want to find m and n uh, such that 
MA plus MB is equal to the GCD of AMA. So uh, let's start with uh, the K minus one -th step. So which is this? So this is uh, K minus, I just let me write that, K minus one -th step, this is K step. So we start with K minus one -th step. And uh, we, we have already seen that this is the GCD. R K minus one is the GCD. So, uh, so let's, I'm just copying that step. So D is R K minus one. So this is what we want to do now. So we want to find, find A and M. So D is uh, R K minus one and R K minus one, we can write it as R K minus three minus R K minus two Q K minus one. And, and then we go to the previous step. So previous step I haven't written. So let me write that just by copying this thing. So let me write the uh, K minus K minus two X step. So K minus C. K minus step. So, yeah. Yeah, so that should be R K minus four is equal to. So just, just the same thing with uh, k replaced by k minus one, you can put like that. So k minus four uh, is r k minus three, q k minus two, and r k minus two. So then we have an expression for r k minus two. So what would this step give? So r k minus two, is going to be R K minus four minus K minus four minus R K minus three Q K minus two. So just uh, change this to this side. So this is R K minus four minus of R K minus three Q K minus two. And uh, then put this expression into this. So D is equal to R K minus three minus of, so this R K minus two is now getting replaced by this expression, which is R K minus four minus R K minus three Q K minus. Two. Now we note that uh, so we started with an expression which involved k my r k minus two, and also r k minus three, of course. Uh, but now r k minus two is gone. It is replaced by some expression which involves r k minus two and r k minus four. So what we are doing, we are just going up the ladder. So we are just going up the steps. So we we simply came down the steps to get the GCD. And now we are going so, sort of retracing our steps. So we are retracing our steps to A and B. So that can, you can keep doing that till you reach A. B. So that's the, that's the idea. So that's the idea uh, to get this D. And as soon as you get this, uh, if D is one, then you can get, uh, get the inverse. So that's the, that's the thing. So these can be retraced to prove, so the steps can be retraced to prove this. I'm just uh, not writing it uh, fully. I mean, it's, uh, it, it would be a longer and longer expression, but uh, the, you can see the process that you would be eliminating uh, the, the R's which are coming in later steps and just going up the ladder to A and B. So, so with that, I would just, uh, let's look at an example. 
so let's look at an example uh, so i would just write so you can just think about it yourself rather than writing many clumsy lines so just continue uh, in this way in this way we get In fact, a computer program, an easy computer program, can be written uh, with this. Uh, continue. To do this. So just let me add a page. Yeah. So now, how do we practically do it? Given some numbers. So. Uh, so just looking at the inverses. So uh, yeah, so I'll just take a number which I have already worked out some uh, some slightly bigger. Uh, you can also suggest some. So just do this because the divisions I have already done. So use this. So so let's find let's see that. Uh, so uh, what we want to do is uh, find inverse of. inverse of uh, 35 modulo or just write mod uh, 256 of course we just need to choose uh, you can just choose any two integers which are co-prime that's it so so let's try this so i'm just doing a division algorithm so 256 I just the first step is to divide 256 by uh, 35. So if I do that, then this is 35 into 7 plus, uh, so it leaves a remainder 11. So uh, just, uh, just to note that this is the, uh, so this is uh, our first step. So this is my, uh, so a equal to b q one plus r one. So that's the first step. And uh, then we uh, divide thirty five. So just thirty five by eleven. So that is that becomes easy. So plus uh, two. So that is uh, b is equal to q two r two plus R3. Uh, one second. I divided by R1. Sorry, sorry. I divided by R1. So this is R1. Q2, R1 plus R2. So it's the second. Sorry, R2. It's the second step. Yeah. So um, then, then it is 11, which is being divided by R2. So two into so five into two, so five into two. Uh, uh, I'm I should actually maintain the direction. So it's like two into five plus one. Yeah, just just uh, maintaining the uh, just the correct order. Uh, so this is. Uh, R, R1 is equal to R2. So we are dividing R1 by R2. Uh, so I change the order there. I should have written R1 uh, Q2. Just trying to keep this exact same order. So B is 35, uh, R1 is 11. And so this R1 comes here and R2 is 2 and that is what we are dividing now. So R1 is divided by R2. So R2, uh, so R3 quotient is R3 third step and uh, remainder in third step is also R3. So R3 is 1 and uh, now we would divide 2 by 1. So that is uh, uh, 2 by 1. So 1 into 2. And, and what you get this remainder is zero. 
So of course that would happen because one is the GCD. So wherever you get zero, the previous uh, remainder is your GCD, which is one, which we already know. Uh, so now how do we retrace the steps uh, to get this linear combination? Let's do that. So uh, a stitch, uh, we should start from here. So wherever we get the zero, we should start from the previous step because that's the GCD. So one is 11 minus two into five. Now replace this two by this expression. So 11 minus, so two is replaced by this uh, expression, 35 minus 11 into three into five. And uh, then we uh, just uh, multiply it out, whatever we get. So we get 11 minus uh, 35 uh, plus 11 into uh, 15. So 3 into 5, 15. Uh, but we shouldn't multiply out 11 because we want to substitute this in place of so, uh, so this is 15 times 11 and 111. So we have 16, 11 and oh, sorry, sorry, 35 into five. So 35 into five plus 11 into 15. So this is 11 into 16 minus 35 into five. Now 11 is replaced by this. So it is 256 minus uh, 35 into 7, uh, 35 into 7, that's, that, that stands for 11 and as uh, multiplied by 16 minus 35 into 5. So 256 into 16 is uh, minus, um, so let's multiply out this 30. Uh, so if I take 35 common, then it is 7 into 16 plus 5. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is 16. I just write it in that form 256. Uh, this is again, I'm writing it as plus. Uh, so what is 7 into 16? Mm. So 112, is that correct? 112, or did I make a mistake? So 112, oh, plus 5, so 117. Uh, so this is with a minus sign. Just to match our expression, I'm putting this, pulling this minus here. So into 35. So what we have is just this, uh, that this is my uh, M A plus N B. So that is what is the, that's the, that's, that's, that's the way we wanted to write. And uh, so M is 16. So 16 times this 256 uh, plus minus 117 times 35 uh, is uh, is one. So that's the GCD. So we have written GCD in that form, and uh, now the, the of course the finding inverse is completely trivial. So we simply so let's write this. So now reduce this last equation. Reduce mod. 256. So if you reduce mod 256, then this multiple of 256 is 0, mod 256. And uh, this is, uh, so this product is uh, 1 modulo 256. And therefore, the inverse of thirty five modulo 256 is minus 117 minus 117 mod 256 
and uh, that you can write it as uh, what 139 so yeah 139 mod 139 mod 256 these two are just same so this is uh, So uh, if you wish, we can check it by just by multiplying. So if you multiply 139 by 35, then we should be getting one mod uh, 256. And uh, this is 256 into 19 plus one. So that's just, you can use a calculator to check that. So, so 139 is of course the inverse of 35 modulo 256. So, that, so that's that's a general method. So that's a general method given any two uh, numbers A and B, you can find uh, if they are relatively co-prime, you can find their inverse. Uh, if they are in general, so if they are not relatively co-prime, you can write GCD in this form that MA plus in can write it as an integer linear combination of these two numbers. So this is kind of a reverse uh, Euclidean algorithm. So okay, so that is uh, that is uh, fine. And uh, what is so anything any any question or anything at all you want to address? So please do so. Uh, let me think about what to do. Uh, okay, yeah, one, yeah, one more problem. I think. Okay, so uh, yeah, so anyway, you can stop me whenever you wish. So I would uh, uh, start with another problem. And that's that's there in the yeah it was also started writing something about magic squares which we uh, could do last time so anyway so uh, new page after so it's uh, this problem it, uh, yeah this was also one of the exercises so, uh, mm, if n is an integer, show that n to the 5 and n have the same last digit in decimal expansion. In their decimal expansion. So if you uh, expand them uh, based in that usual decimal expansion, then the last digit has to be same. So in 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 in, uh, in this terminology of uh, congruence, n to the five. What I am just simply saying that n to the five and n should be congruent modulo ten. So in that decimal expansion. So agreement of the last digit is same as equality modulo uh, ten. So uh, let's start with uh, yeah. So we we recall this. So just recall this. So recall uh, that n to the p is n mod p. So this holds for any integer n and uh, p prime so p is prime 
p is prime. So we do that for five. So into the five is n mod five. But what we want is into the five minus n. So this n to the five and n are equivalent or congruent modulo five. We want to say that they are congruent modulo ten. So that is all. That's easy actually. So uh, what we would do into the five minus n, write it as into the four minus one, and that would give n into n square minus one, n square plus one, and n into n minus one, n plus one, n square plus one, and uh, that is definitely even. So that is definitely zero mod. So that's definitely even because if uh, so the it involves consecutive integers. In fact, it has three consecutive integers. We don't need any two. So if you take any two consecutive integers, one of them have to be even. So this is uh, divisible by two, and uh, therefore, so it is divisible by five and divisible by two. And five and two uh, have nothing in common. They have they are co prime. So into the five is congruent. To into the uh, n mod ten. So for any integer n n to the five and n ends with same decimal digit. Last dec decimal digit is always the same. Uh, okay. Mm. So, uh, mm, so I also asked for some uh, this uh, solution. So, which I would probably not discuss. If you want, uh, I can discuss this. Uh, this is actually, if you just try, it is very easy. So, uh, these things that uh, checking this multiplication uh, by uh, checking modulo nine and uh, finding this. Uh, uh, finding this uh, congruences, so that is really very easy. So, uh, so this uh, and and also I, I there was a problem of solving these equations. So linear equations in two variables. So uh, so that is over z seven and z five. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So and and there was, there was one quadratic. For the quadratic equation, you can simply use the usual. You can just think of it as an integer over. Uh, sorry, you can think of it, just uh, think of it as an equation over integers, uh, and then solve it, and then reduce the solutions. That would do that. Three and five are solutions. Sorry. Three and five are solutions. Yes, three and five are solutions. Absolutely. So that is that. It's actually very easy. So that. So whatever you get is it just remains valid modulo eleven, so it's fine. And here, so if you if you try the first one, then what happens? Uh, modulo, uh, uh, I think modulo five or yeah. So in one of these, uh, you get it. Uh, so okay, let let's see. If you if, if you just uh, try to eliminate the x, and uh, so you multiply by four, the first equation is four x plus eight. Y is equal to 16. So you were just multiplying by 4, and when you reduce it modulo uh, uh, 5, then what happens? You get 4x plus 3y equal to uh, 1. So if you are on, uh, if you are in 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 z 5, so that will be a line parallel to this. So you won't get a solution. So there you won't get a solution, but when you are uh, when you are in Z7, it is, these are distinct lines. So this is uh, 4x plus y equal to 2. So these these two would be distinct line, and you would get a solution. So without any problem. So so the so the uh, this modular modular uh, this modular arithmetic makes this uh, these two uh, lines parallel. 
if you are in Z5. So that was the point. So fine. So this is. Uh, so I I want to turn out. So yeah, I mean as I as I as I as I said that you can interrupt me, uh, but if you don't have any question and now then I would just talk about. A, so I'll just try to tell you a story. So this this is about the last part of the of my whatever note I sent. So. Uh, yes, so so the story is about this. So I wrote a question to explore uh, this. So uh, let me uh, uh, let me just repeat the question. Uh, so we we know that two to the so yeah. So any in fact any n if uh, uh, p is P is a prime. Uh, P is a prime, and n is any integer which is co-prime to P, not divisible by P. Then uh, n uh, uh, n to the P minus one is congruent to uh, one mod. P. We have seen proof of a general result in fact. So, uh, so if uh, if P if two P is uh, P is not Two, so p is a prime. P is a prime at least three, and p is greater than or equal to three. Greater than or equal to three, at least three, an odd prime. So two to the p minus one is one mod one mod p. So P divides two to the p minus one minus one. Now, of course, you can ask the ask that uh, uh, does there exist? So that's the question. So does there exist a prime such that p square divides this? So not only p divides, but p square also divides. So in other words, uh, two to the p minus one is congruent to one modulo p square. So uh, do you have such a Does that exist? So uh, that's that has an interesting history. So just uh, mention that I would uh, just open a page to write that. Uh, I can remember this. So uh, yeah. So this actually takes us to Farmer's last theorem. So, uh, okay. Yeah. So, what what is Palmer's last theorem? Of course, it's a very celebrated theorem, and it's now actually a theorem. So, it says that for n greater than or equal to three, so it was conjectured by Palmer long time back, and it solved uh, essentially recently, uh, just. Uh, Uh, around the end of last century so for n greater than or equal to 3 the equation x to the n plus y to the n is e equal to z to the n has no solution in integers as no solution in integers x y z such that x y z the product so none of them is zero of course if if you take y to be zero then and x and z are equal then you have infinitely many solution and of course all three so x x y z zero has solution uh, if two of them are zero then the other one is also zero so that so you have solution so those are just trivial solutions so uh, what we are what this uh, theorem is saying that there are no uh, uh, non trivial solution there are no non zero solutions uh, so okay 
so as uh, so this was a big conjecture and a lot of people tried solving it and as i said that it, it i mean as you as you know that it was solved in uh, 1990s and uh, with a lot of sophisticated machinery so uh, is if uh, so in in the in in an early days of this um, uh, exploration so uh, in 1909 uh, a surprising result was proved by somebody called Arthur uh, Weferi, probably Weferi, if I am pronouncing it correctly. If you know how to pronounce it, then correct me. Weferi. So Arthur Weferi uh, proved the following result that if x to the p plus y to the p is equal to z to the p for an odd prime for a prime p greater than or equal to 5 uh, has solutions Uh, in integers or integer solutions, I write just write integer solutions x, y, z with uh, that condition that x, y, z the product is uh, not zero. And another condition, P does not divide X, Y, Z. So P does not divide any of this. So if that happens, if this equation has a solution, uh, as a non-trivial solution, and also P, if P does not divide that solution. So instead of N, we are taking primes. So in fact, it's enough to solve this for primes. So that is why that. So primes are of importance. So the prime values of N are of at most importance. Uh, they are the only one you need to solve. And uh, what what uh, Arthur Weferich, Weferich solved or proved is that if you have such a P, then P satisfies the what we are, uh, then P satisfies uh, 2 to the P minus 1 is 1 modulo square. So this we would call it W. So such a prime P is called, so this prime is named after the, his name, so he is named after this, uh, this mathematician, Arthur uh, Weferic. So this is a uh, weak prime. Yeah, if you Google search with you, we you ferric uh, prime, uh, you uh, then you would get a lot of things. So, so you we ferric primes. And uh, so uh, what about our uh, this uh, uh, question that uh, what is the smallest one so it's not easy to find actually uh, of course i mean now with advanced computer algorithm you can find it but uh, by hand it's not easy so that's the reason it took some time to uh, get this prime so that was done in 1913 uh, so 1913 uh, this uh, mathematician Mishner. Uh, showed that P is so he found the smallest prime which is 1093 and uh, then in 1922 bigger 
uh, found the next one, which is 35.11. So uh, now, now, so what I would say, you have two. So why, uh, why can't we find more? So it is also known by computer search now that if uh, any more So I'm just writing W prime to, to stand for V ferric prime. So if any more V ferric prime exists, uh, then it exceeds. So it has to be bigger than 6.7 into 10 to the 15. So the next V ferric prime if it exists, uh, is going to be very large. So that much is known. So we do not know whether there are infinitely many such primes or uh, whether there are infinitely many such primes or not. So it's not, nothing is known. So we only have two examples. And uh, that was found long time back. And uh, since the farmer's last theorem is solved, so nobody uh, really bothered to look for this more. But there are other things which which is connected to this prime. So, yeah, if, if you just uh, Google search, you would find interesting. So uh, that's uh, so that's essentially all I wanted to say. Unless you have some uh, something to add or some something, some any any comments, anything is uh, welcome. Or if you have anything in mind that you want me to do in my uh, next uh, three lectures. So any, any, any suggestion is welcome. Yeah, so I would stop with that. So if you have, yeah. Yeah, so shall we just then uh, call it a day or? Okay, sir. I think yeah, no I questions think. from our audience. Yeah, so if anything, anything at all, yeah. Okay, sir. So I hope no questions, sir. Uh, maybe okay. we'll meet five o'clock for the next tutorial. Okay. And uh, Raghavan also probably didn't have anything in the chat. Box. Chat, I think. Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah, no comments in the chat box, sir. Yeah, yeah. Only thank you once more. Okay.
okay sir thank you sir okay thank you oh, ah thank you sir we will meet again right. ah okay sir thank you sir yeah. okay thank you sir